welcome to the coastal city of Aarhus, located in eastern Jutland in the geographical centre of Denmark. And we're here in Denmark's second largest city for the 2021 Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cups, the Men's and Women's World Team Championships. 32 teams from 19 different nations qualified for these championships, with representation from all five continents. Not only teams from Europe and Asia, but also Tahiti representing Oceania, Canada for Pan America, and both Algeria and Egypt representing the African continent. So the competition is designed to have 16 teams in both the Thomas and the Uber Cups. Those 16 teams were then divided into four groups of four. So the first stage of competition is group round robin play, where every country plays every other country within their group. Then the top two teams uh, qualify for the quarter-final knockout stage. So from Thursday afternoon, we have quarter-finals, then semi-finals before the Uber Cup final on Saturday evening and the Thomas Cup final on Sunday afternoon. Now when we look at the Thomas Cup groups we can see that Indonesia, the most successful team in the history of the Thomas Cup, having won 13 titles, are the number one seeds and therefore in Group A. Denmark, the hosts and winners in 2016, are the number four seeds. China, the defending champions and ten times winners, are the number three seeds in Group C. And the only group with former winners with two former winners is Group D with both Japan, the 2014 winners, and Malaysia, who have won the Thomas Cup on five separate occasions. But following the last minute withdrawal of England from the Thomas Cup, as you saw, Group D now only has three teams. Now we're having three sessions a day and first this morning was the Thomas Cup Cup tie between the number five seeds, Chinese Taipei and Thailand. And it was an absolute thriller with Thailand coming through 3-2 in the fifth and final match. We then had a Uber Cup tie with the defending champions, Japan beating France 5-love. But here this evening on court number one, we're concentrating on the Thomas Cup Group B encounter between Korea and Germany. Well, as has become tradition, the team huddles, and this was Korea just a few minutes ago. All teams in great spirits. And I can tell you that Korea has twice contested the Thomas Cup final, both in 2008 and 2012, and they lost to China on both occasions. Germany has twice reached the quarter-final stage, the last time being nine years ago, when they lost to Korea, their opponents of today. But they too have been in great spirits, and I think they have a well-balanced team, so this should be an interesting tie. Well, five matches, three singles and two doubles, and this is the standard order of uh, first men's singles first with Ho Kwang Hee, the Olympic quarter-finalist up against Weisskirchen of Germany. First men's doubles follows that and a top 10 pair for Korea, Choi and So, up against a new pair from Germany, Janssen and Seidel. Then the second men's singles and Kim Dong-hoon up against Fabian Roth, the former European junior champion. Then the second men's doubles and Kang and Kim, the bronze medalists at the Asian Championships two years ago, are up against Hess and Fulka. Then we finish with the third men's singles and Jun Ha Jin, he's a former top 20 player back from injury, three and a half years out with injury. He's up against the 19 year old Kitlitz for Germany. So a terrific lineup with some of the world's leading players and some youngsters and that's always a wonderful thing to see. Ho Kwang Hee, the 26 year, year old from Korea, is up against Max Weisskirchen of Germany. Korean he the first to emerge onto centre stage. 
what a week he had in Vanta in the Sudaman Cup competition. Played four matches and won three of them. The only time he didn't win was in the semi-final against China, Xi Yuji. These two men actually played against each other in that Sudaman Cup and Max Vaisakirchen is going to turn 25 later this month, making his first appearance in the Thomas Cup. A debut as far as he is concerned in this particular competition. But this to me is an interesting start to this Thomas Cup tie uh, because this will be a third meeting between these two players and of the previous two honours are shared but as I was just saying the last time they met was in the very recent Sudaman Cup in Vanta in Finland. There is confirmation of the scoreline it was 21-19 in the deciding game and actually Paul Cranhe before winning had been 13-17 down in that deciding game so this man Vais Kishkan is more than capable of causing an upset here in the first of these matches. So the Korean, as you can see, 26 years of age from Dae Jun and 180, that's about 5 foot 11 and a half one place after his exploits in Finland up to 33 which is still one place down from his career high. His Olympic quarter-final loss to Kevin Corden of Guatemala who ended up fourth but did beat Kinta Momolta in the group stage the number one seed. That was the biggest shock I think of the whole of the Olympic Games. So as I was telling you and Max Weisskirchen is going to turn 25 next month, born in Bonn in Germany. 59 on the world ranking at the moment, which, like his opponent, is just one place down from a career high. Won the silver medal at the European Junior Championships in 2015. Lost out to a certain Anders Antonsen, who is now the world number three. Our umpire for this one from Denmark, and that's Jesper Larsen. Ivo Kassel from Switzerland will be our service judge for this one. So these two players, well, both had tough times in the Sudaman Cup, leading out as the number one singles player for both of their countries. Very much the Lions work as far as both players were concerned, but of course Germany did not progress past the group stage, so there was only three matches and the man who's playing second men singles today, Fabian Roth, uh, played one of the three matches, so advise Kijin He's only played two matches in Vonta. So, the way that Hawkeye He is playing, especially after the Olympics, and what's happening here? The tournament referee, or the deputy referee, I should say, Marcel Schormans, has come on to court. Is there a problem with our mat here? There might well be. A close examination by our deputy referee from the Netherlands. Maybe it's just a little bit of perspiration. It's certainly needing some attention before play gets underway for our third and last session of the day. Ah, now. Doctor having to put a plaster on as well. Now that must have happened after he came onto court because I can't believe he would have not put a plaster on. 
prior to the start of play, had he known that he'd got a blood injury. Yeah, so that's what the problem was. There was a little bit of blood on the court, and that's, for obvious reasons, the rules of international sport. Blood injuries must be treated immediately, and any little uh, spots of blood on the courts must be uh, dealt with and cleaned up as quickly as possible. So, Korea, I can tell you a little bit more about them. Twice finalists when they first reached the final of the Thomas Cup in 2008. They lost in the final 3-1 to China. And then they reached the final again four years later. And that was in 2012 when the event was staged in Wuhan in China. And they lost the final love three to the host China. Wuhan sadly made famous nowadays for other reasons. Well, the first time I saw Vice Kishin was at the Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing in 2014 when he reached the quarter final stage. singles in this Thomas Cup tie. Oh, that's well played from the tall German. Now for six foot tall, the German. It was the defensive block across court, though, that really opened up the rally for the Korean. Look at that final smash. Went down so crisply. Former World Junior Champion, this man from Korea. He won the World Junior Championships in Bangkok in 2013. He won away in the final. Yeah. Now, I thought a little block earlier from the German was going wide like that one. And I have to say, after his gold medal at World Junior Championships, I thought, poor Kwon, he went into the wilderness a little bit. He really didn't develop into senior badminton the way so many of us had hoped and even expected. Hesitation at the front of the court from Vice Kishin. Oh. 
great athletic dive, isn't it? And look how quickly he gets up again. Astonishing. Said unsighted. Unsighted. So, the instant review system will adjudicate for us, but nobody will lose any challenges. Here we go. Caught the line. to stop that run of points. Where's Kishan? the lift from the German and it meant the lift was woefully short look where his feet are as he's leaping in the air well inside the double service line and that's always an indication of how deep the lift was or in that occasion how deep it wasn't probably a winner, three shots ago from this man. This was the one. Did it awfully well, the German, to get that back. Yeah, well, that's an improvised backhand from Kok Van Hee. Good start by the Korean. Oh, yes. Well, the last time this man made a final of an international tournament, we have to go back to 2019 in the Chinese Taipei Super 300 event. Whereas his opponent, was in a final earlier this year. Okay, it was a, only an international series event, which is a lower tier of tournament in the World Tour. And we reached the final of the Portuguese international series. Push it wrong. It was indecision again at the back of the court from Vice Kishka. That's really cost him dear. But it's a handsome lead. Seven point advantage at the mid-game interval here in the open game for this man. Look at that power on that smash. Sets up a simple put away. But look again where his feet were. Not enough depth on the lifts and the clears from the German. Yeah. 
advantage. Some young German coach actually said to him. Oh, lucky net cord. Raises his hand in apology as Vice Kirschen. straight points now to the German. Oh, it's great follow-up. We saw that at the last point before the mid-game interval. Quick follow-up. Good attacking play. Knows that the response is going to be a block. Look how quickly he's forward. Racket arm outstretch, launching himself towards the net. He's certainly commanding more of the rallies as the Korean. Dictating the pace, wanting to attack, and that's paying dividends. when we were coming down to the venue this evening. Oh, he's just missed it. That was unfortunate for Vice Kirschen. As I can tell you, Hawkman P was not covering that cross-court net shot at all. Good dive. And again. Oh, oh it's athletic play from this man. Two wonderful dives. I love the way he blocks it across court. That was the second dive. And then the leap round the head and he makes the error. It wasn't really on balance. Defensive play from the Koreans. I've seen it at least 
twice, if not three times already in this match. Forehand defence, blocking cross court, and he really opens up his opponent's court with that particular shot. Oh my goodness, indecision again. He simply cannot afford that. Yeah, it would have landed in. He was right to play it, but he's got to make that decision earlier on. There's the block again. Once again, opened up the court. And I suggest that the German shouldn't have actually been smashing so much down the Korean's forehand side. I think he needs to mix it up a bit. It's a wonderful cross-court block, but he shouldn't be getting advantage from it so often. Yeah, that's cool, guys. We didn't actually see it, but it was on the giant screen. Oh, that's brilliant. What a difference. From that round the head position, he smashed one cross court. He's been playing so many straight that time, changing it up, and that was a perfect angle. Wonderful. Almost lost his balance. Uh, uh, I don't like the body language of this man at the moment. Uh, he's beating up on himself. Oh, there's something about the round the head shot. 1912. Well, another challenge. I suppose he might as well. Because if he doesn't challenge this and doesn't win this challenge, he's game point down. But I saw that as out. Opportunities for Ho Kwan He and Korea. Oh, 
Oh, that's a super Yeah. Last two smashes from the German have been down the backhand side of his opponent. That's nicely done. A little bit of reverse slice on that to cause the dissection. Oh, my goodness. Oh! 14, 20. I don't believe it. Well, the attempted kill from Ho Kwang He hit onto the racket of his opponent and it bounced in. Look at that. That's just outrageous. Oh, he's done a cross court net shot. This time he meant it. Well, three game points have come and gone. But still another five opportunities for Ho Kwang He to close out his opening game. Oh, game take that. First game one back in the end, 21-15. Umpire Larson confirms that scoreline, 21-15. Eighteen minutes of play in Korea. One game to the good. following up on his smashes be wary of that but there was some definitely some discussion about the follow-up oh that's a beauty what an angle you see he uses his height so well he's six foot one and a half tall german look at that Slicing across the feathers of the shuttle, the glancing blow, the racket head comes through so quickly. So opponents think it's going to be a power shot, but because you slice across the feathers, it makes extra spin on the shuttle, and the extra spin is extra air resistance, and extra air resistance means that the shuttle slows even quicker. Hence it dies and it gets that really acute angle. Well, in the Sullivan Cup, this man 
from Korea just quite simply ran out of steam in the end. In the group, he went three games against his opponent of today, this man. He then beat Chu Tien Chen, former world number two. Oof, well taken. Gosh, he was quick onto that. Beat Chu Tien Chen in three games. Then he beat Vidisan in three games, coming from 16 19 down in the decider. Won the opening game of the semi final against China, against Xi and Chi, and simply ran out of steam. Oh, that's clever, clever play from the Korean. I think that's the first body smash he's used all match. And the reason I mentioned those long, hard matches a week ago for the Korean is because I think there's a couple of signs that he's still feeling his exploits from just over a week ago in his legs. And I think he's still just a little bit tired. In fact, it was exactly a week ago, wasn't it, the semi-final? Any fun of the Sudan Cup, of course. Oh, there it is again. Well, if you've found a winning shot, keep using it until it's not working, then mix it up again. And there. Look at that leap round the head to play the body smash once more. Great athletic ability. And in all honesty, that just blows my theory out of the water, doesn't it, about his feeling the pace in his legs. Hmm, a little bit of feather in the eye. Hmm, that can be painful. And if he wears contact lenses, that will be very painful. Yeah, it's still not right. Concerned coach. That was lucky. Well, this time it was the German trying the body smash. An extraordinary little defence from the Korean. Look at that, he gets the neck cord. Oh, superb. Absolutely superb. What a difference when he's smashing cross court from that round the head position. Well, I've counted, I think, three outright winners with that. And that's after he'd been playing down the Korean's forehand side and the Korean playing that cross block that really wasn't getting the German anywhere at all. Oh, that is delightful. What a wonderful disguise drop shot. But if we see that again, look where his feet were. Look, he's on the double service line when he plays that. The lift not nearly deep enough in court. Challenge here. Turn the challenge from the Korean this time. Here we go. 
Yeah. Well done, Mind Judge. So that's only one challenge left for poor Quanky. Service over. Six all. kill from He. Look at this. How on earth did the German get that one back? Absolutely extraordinary. Wonderful rally. there'd been discussion about that with his coach he was right there well, that could be a costly miss that's wide and long in his defensive stance, I think, Vice Kirshen. Ah, that was clever thought process from the Korean. Because with the attempted kill, which was a kill, he carefully played it away from his opponent rather than trying to make the kill at his opponent. Because there's a couple of times that's backfired on him. And we've done it. Four point advantage at the mid-game interval for Korea in the form of He. He. before the mid-game interval. That number now comes to an end. Here's that slice again with the glancing blow. It really is a tremendous shot.
what a shot. Oh, that was great disguise on that drop. Using the reverse slice. Yep, another net call from the Korean. Once again raises his hand in apology. points here from Vice Kishan. I would have liked to have seen, especially when I think back to their match a little over a week ago in Vantar in Finland. thought process, wanting to take it early at the front of the court, wanting to apply pressure on the Korean with a flat push to the back of the court. Right, you simply can't afford areas like that when you're five or six points adrift. Great lift. Good rally. Service over. Oh. He's had a lot of neck cords. As the Korean that time, staying on his side of the court. It's now or never.
and uh, stayed the German side and two points away from the opening match for Korea. One point away from winning the first men's singles for Kwon Hee. when you're on match point opportunities. All oh, strings have gone, I think, in the German's racket. They have. Uh, it's nothing he can do. Remarkable, he's managing to control the shuttle as well as he is. Uh, an obvious delight for Ho Kwang Hee as he takes the first singles in this Thomas Cup tie Group B encounter. 21 15, 21 13 confirms the umpire, and as you can see, a match lasting 39 minutes. Thumbs up from the Korean. Good start. Much more comfortable victory over the German than last week in the Sudaman Cup. So here in the Thomas Cup, this is the match point opportunity in the German's racket. The strings had gone some considerable time earlier than that. How on earth he kept the shuttle coming back, but you really have little chance of winning a rally when the strings are broken. So coming up next is the first of the men's doubles. It's Choi and So up against Janssen and Seidel.
So welcome back to the Ceres Arena here in Aarhus. Wonderful facility. Football stadium you can see in the background as well. And three courts in action here for the Thomas and Uber Cups.